Geronimo Stilton, The Amazing Voyage, Part 5. I read the writing on the ring. It said, only for peace. As I was leaving the treasure room, I bumped into Sterling. She gasped when she saw the ring on my paw. Now that you have a ring of light, you must begin your dragon training, she declared. Dragon training? I was thinking I might take a quick nap, I squeaked. Doesn't the salty sea air make you drowsy? But Sterling just ignored me. She dragged me up to the deck as she blew into her flute. Immediately, the dragon of the rainbow and sparkle arrived. Sterling leafed through the dragon trainer's manual. Lesson number one. How to care for your dragon. Hours later, I had learned all the ways to care for a dragon. Lesson number two. Air fighting. Soon I had learned how to take off, how to land, how to do crazy acrobatics, and even how to do some special moves to use in a battle. In fact, we're going to turn the page to read Sterling's manual, The Secret Art of Dragon Training. Are you ready to become a perfect dragon trainer? With these short lessons, you will learn all the techniques for taking care of and riding your dragon. You will also learn how to take some small but necessary precautions. Lesson number one is how to care for your dragon. First, saddle the dragon. It is a simple but delicate operation. If you don't want to fall flat on the ground, remember to pull the straps tight. And above all, try to do it quickly. Dragons have very, very, very little patience. Next is teeth brushing, because proper dental hygiene is very important. And food. Dragons eat large quantities of food, and it has to be very, very spicy. Which takes us to digestion. A good dragon owner always cleans up a dragon's smelly messes. And next, nail filing. Keep your dragon's paws perfectly manicured. And finally, a warning. Never, ever walk past the back paws of your dragon or you might go flying. Anyway, the dragon of the rainbow really liked the acrobatics lesson. Yee-haw! He cried, are we having fun or what? I didn't have the energy to answer. My whiskers trembled with fright and my stomach lurched. Finally, the dragon landed. I tumbled off him, clutching my paw to my mouth. I raced across the deck. My stomach flipped. And flop. I barely made it to the side of the ship before I got sick. Poor me. I hoped that the training was over. Anyone could see I was a total mess. But Sterling just opened her book and continued. Okay, Knight, let's get started on lesson number three. How to use the ring of light, she said. I stood up. Um, Sterling, maybe we can do this another time. I'm really not feeling so hot, I began. But just then I heard a loud clatter. I looked up to find Thunderhorn trotting toward me. He looked at me right in the eyes. We are here to save Blossom Knight, he said seriously. You must pull yourself together. Now, are you... Or are you not ready to be a true keeper of the ring? I blinked. A, a true keeper of the ring? Oh, what did that mean? It all sounded very serious and a little bit scary. But then I thought of Blossom and I nodded. 
I, I guess I'm ready, I squeaked. Thunderhorn stamped his hoof. Don't guess, always know, he insisted. Now, before Sterling teaches you to fight with the ring, you need to make it radiate light. I, I gulped. Um, how do I, I do to do that? I stammered. Do I press a button? Thunderhorn roared with laughter. What was it with this deer? One minute he was yelling at me, and the next minute he was laughing his antlers off. Suddenly, Thunderhorn grew still. To make the sort of light appear, you must clear your mind of every fear. Let your heart be peaceful, and most of all, have faith in yourself, he said. I tried to do as Thunderhorn instructed, but it wasn't easy to forget all my fears. Did I mention that I'm a total scaredy mouse? Every day we were on the ship, I practiced and practiced. Then finally, one night, a sword of the whitest light radiated from the ring. My heart filled with hope and joy. Sterling still needed to teach me how to fly a dragon. But at that moment, I felt pure strength. We would save Blossom. I was sure of it. Long live the queen. Good will triumph. For the rest of the trip, Sterling taught me how to fight with the ring. Around us, the sky was becoming more and more smoky. The air was more and more unbreathable and we were all feeling more and more hopeless. At dawn on the seventh day, Horizon threw down the anchor in the Gulf of Sad Awakenings. We got off the boat at Shiver Beach. Suddenly, there were thunder and lightning and rain. We had obviously entered the land of nightmares. Many years ago, the land of nightmares was called the Kingdom of Dreams. It was a beautiful place governed by a good and wise king. But the Queen of the Witches placed an evil spell on the land, transforming it into an ugly place filled with a cold and nasty king. The royal palace was dug from a volcano and contains a terrible prison, the Pit of Sighs. The King of Nightmares is Grim the Grouch. He is the half-brother of Cackle, the Queen of Witches. He is also called the Lord of Fright, and he who wears the Rock Mask. The reason Grim wears the Rock Mask is that Cackle tricked him. The mask is bewitched, and can Cackle convinced him to wear it by telling him that his kingdom would last only as long as he hid his face. The land of nightmares does not have a queen, because Grimm has never been in love. He is afraid of good feelings and positive emotions. We left Horizon docked in front of Shiver Beach and set up camp for the night. I snacked on Queen Cozy's sugar cookies. Yum, crunch, crunch, crunch. They were whisker-licking good. Mmm, yummy. Strongheart munched on raw onions, and Gray ate fish. I checked the compass to make sure we were going in the right direction. Suddenly, Strongheart picked something out of his hat. Who left fish bones in my hat? He roared. Strongheart waved his hat in the air. I know it was you, you rotten furball, he thundered, chasing Gray across the beach. Gray took off like a shot. He climbed up an oak tree and began throwing acorns at Strongheart. Listen, Big Nose, you couldn't catch me if I gave you ten head starts. You're so slow, 
You make my great grandma creaky look fast, Gray shrieked. Strongheart was enraged. He shook the trunk of the tree and glared up at Gray. Fish face, he shouted. Onion breath, Gray shouted back. I tried to stop them, but it was no use. They wouldn't listen. Finally, Thunderhorn stepped forward and said, just one word. Enough! His voice was so loud and so firm, everyone stopped. You should be ashamed of yourselves. We promise to support each other. We are a company and we have a mission. There must be peace between us, Thunderhorn said. Strongheart's face turned red from shame. Um, so sorry, Gray. I really shouldn't have called you Furball or Fish Face or... He began. Gray interrupted him. I get the idea, Strongheart, he purred. And I'm so sorry I said you were slower than Grandma Creaky. She can barely make it to the litter box. At dawn the next day, we were all ready to continue our journey. Unfortunately, Horizon had to say goodbye to us. If only I could walk, she said sadly. I would love to come with you, but I guess that's the downside of living on the water. Oh, well. What can you do, right? I patted her deck. It's okay, I said. We will tell the queen what you did to save her. Then Horizon gave me a beautiful pearl to give Blossom as a gift. Sparkle, Sterling Silver Dragon, and the Dragon of the Rainbow stayed behind to protect Horizon. Be careful, I called as we headed off. We'll be back really soon. It seemed that we were walking for ages. It was sad to travel in that dark land where we would surely encounter some trolls. We arrived at the Chasm of Fear. We had to cross the chasm on a shaky bridge, but Strongheart was too big. He lengthened his step to leap over the ravine, but he tripped and got his boot stuck. He tried to get it out, but it wouldn't budge. Come on, you big lug, Gray shouted. You can do it. It's stuck, you fuzzy feline, Strongheart complained. Finally, we pulled his foot out, but Strongheart's boot was stuck for good. <sighs> Guess I'll need to hit the shoe store when I get home, he sighed. Strongheart began walking, but his big bare foot hurt from stepping on rocks. He was moving very slowly. When we arrived at the smoke-spitting volcano, there was so much smoke we could barely breathe. Tears streamed from our eyes. The thick clouds of smoke that were filling the kingdom of fantasy were coming from the smoke-spitting volcano in the land of nightmares. That explains why the sunlight couldn't heat up the land and why it was so cold that winter had returned. Strongheart glared at the volcano. Enough with this smoke, this cold, and this stink. I am strong. I will turn off this volcano. Gray rolled his eyes. You can barely walk, big boy, he snickered. What are you going to do? Come on, you two, I insisted. No more bickering. We need to save Blossom. Strongheart hung his head. I hate to admit it, but Gray is right, he said sadly. I can't put out the volcano, and I'm slowing you down. I'd better leave. We all tried to convince him to stay, but he took a feather from his hat. Bring this to the queen, he said. Tell her it's a gift from Strongheart. Don't worry, Strongheart. We will tell her all about how you helped to save her, I said. Then we all hugged him and told him to wait for us by the smoke-spitting volcano. 
We began walking without strong heart. I really missed my gigantic friend. I noticed that Gray missed him too, though he tried not to show it. Good thing we lost that big lug, he mumbled. He was really dragging us down. Then he let out a sad meow. We passed by the stench forest, which was surrounded by a cloud of flies. Then we found ourselves in front of the tremendous river of lost memories. The water in the river formed dangerous waterfalls and whirlpools. Only those who really knew how to swim well would be able to cross it. Well, it looks like we have no choice. There are no bridges, so we will have to swim across the river, I told the others. Gray turned pale. Swim, he meowed. You, you mean jump in the water? Get our fur wet? Not on your life. I mean, I'll do anything, but I can't swim. I'm a cat. Sorry, Knight, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to stay behind. Then he looked behind him and sighed. If only Strongheart were here. He could have put me on his shoulders. I wouldn't have had to get one paw wet. The cat pulled out one of his whiskers and slipped it into a pendant. Take this whisker to the queen and tell her that it is a gift from Gray, he said. I hugged him and said goodbye. Don't worry. I will make sure to tell the queen what you did to help save her. I said, wait for us at the smoke-spitting volcano. Now Thunderhorn, King of the Elves, Sterling, Princess of the Silver Dragons, and I, Sir Geronimo of Stilton, or uh, Geronimo Stilton, were the only three left. We crossed through one scary place after another. I was so afraid. My teeth were chattering up a storm. It felt like every minute we were losing a num another member of the company. We had just passed the slobber swamp when a giant serpent emerged from the slimy water. He had only one eye and teeth as sharp as knives. Ugh. The monster hissed threateningly slithering toward us and leaving behind him a trail of gooey, sticky slime. The serpent blocked our path to prevent us from continuing. Now how would we get through? I have an idea, Sterling said. I will stay here and distract this ferocious creature while the rest of you continue on your way. She took out her silver flute from her satchel. Please take this to the queen and tell her it's a gift from the silver dragon princess, she said. She hugged us. Then she pointed her sword at the serpent. Back off, she commanded. The serpent glared at Thunderhorn and me as we slipped past him. Ooh, cheese sticks, he was slimy. Wait for us at the smoke-spitting volcano, I yelled back to Sterling. And thank you. Now, there were only two of us left. How could we save Blossom with only two members of the company? I tried not to panic. I mean, it could be worse. At least I had Thunderhorn by my side. We crossed through the whispering woods and entered the prickly forest. I wondered why they called the forest prickly. After a few short steps, I understood. Ouch! There were thorns everywhere. As we walked, the thorns became more and more pointy. Thunderhorn's long horns kept getting caught in tangles of thorns. His steps grew slower and slower and slower. Finally, he stopped. I am sorry, Sir Knight, but I cannot continue. I am slowing you down too much, he said. My jaw dropped. This couldn't be happening. I was too much of a scaredy mouse to continue all alone. I did everything I could think of to keep Thunderhorn by my side. First, I gave him one of Queen Cozy's cookies to build up his strength. 
Then I used the ring of light to clear a path, cutting the largest, most prickly branches away from his horns. But it was no use. Thunderhorn was too exhausted to continue. I appreciate all you have done, Sir Knight, he said, but you've got to take it from here. He took off the pendant he wore round his neck. Give this to the queen and tell her it's a gift from Thunderhorn, king of the elves, he instructed. I hugged him. I felt so sad. It was as if I had just lost my last friend. Wait for me at the smoke-spitting volcano, I said, and waved goodbye.